Welcome to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast, where we meet experts from all walks of life to learn their intrinsic motivation so that they can share it with the world. What do we have in store today? Stay tuned. Good morning, to good find evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. You are in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza. And I am David. And today I am really excited to speak with our guest. She is a well-known author, best-selling author, and she's in the top – we're going to talk about the topic of losing weight, but we're going to have a totally different, I think, intrinsic motivation approach to losing weight. She's the author of I'm Lazy and I Love to Eat, and one day in 1998 she thought, you know, I, I, have, I want to lose weight. I want to lose about 50 pounds no matter what. And 19 years later, she finally did it. And so we want to know her story of what it took to laugh at herself and just enjoy life and lose weight in the process. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mary Prenon. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on your podcast today. Yes, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for being with us. And, you know, uh, we're in the middle of the summer, and before we started, we were talking about how hot it is. We're all spread across the country, and it's hot all over the all over the United States. And this is a time when people usually are really self, self-conscious self about the weight. You know, they want to be beach body ready and all the right. bombarding of commercials and such. But you had a different approach of, of looking at that as a whole. I do. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't know, I mean, whether I'm still considered beach body ready, but um, <laughs> I don't know whether I'd ever be that, but, uh, but you know, I, I'm doing good. But my my approach was, you know, losing weight can be very depressing type of, of subject. And it's very frustrating. And I went, you know, I yo-yoed for many years, losing the same 20 pounds over and over again, gaining it back. And I started in 1998 writing down notes, uh, little funny stories that would happen to me when I was, you know, trying to trying to get fit. And I thought, you know what, maybe this might make a good book because I know everybody, men and women, are, are struggling with the same thing. So that's what I did. I just kept writing funny things down. And, you know, about, I guess in 2015, I really started getting serious and putting it all together. And one of my friends uh, is a professional editor in New York City and helped me with it. And um, 2018, the book came out. So <laughs> I love it because in 2019, uh, everyone you know has their emotions on their sleeve. But I love the the, the title of your book. I mean, there's no room for <laughs> I'm lazy and I love to eat. So was that you or the editor that finally came across that one? No, that was my story. That was my – I had a couple different titles before that, but I just said, well, what's what's my biggest problem? And I was like, well, I'm lazy and I love to eat. And I was like, hey, that's a great book title. I think I'll go with that. <laughs> I love it because it's just honest. You know, it's not like – Uh, It made me think of of videos, and videos in the 90s, 80s, and 90s got in big trouble because they would have this toothpick singing, and we found out that it was really someone that was – she was lip singing, and they had someone that they didn't feel hit the demographics singing in the background. Right. Right. And you know what? That's that's what I decided to do with this. This book is very honest. It's really honest. I mean, I even tell people what my weight was. I mean, I started out, I, at one point I stopped stepping on the scale, but just from the size of clothing I was wearing. Now, I'm 5'8", so I was probably up to about 210. It could have been higher, but, you know, I was in like a busting out of a size 16. So now I'm down to 160, and that was the the weight that my cardiologist had set for me. And yeah, it was, you know, it was a big struggle. I'm going to be honest. It was hard work. But my thing was like, let's, instead of being depressed and, oh my God, look how horrible I look, laugh at things. Like I I have in the book, one of the, one of the many weight loss systems that I tried was, I'm not going to say the name of the company because I don't want to get sued, but I actually think they're out of business but they had a weight loss center wedged in between a Boston market and a pastry shop. I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I mean, that was 
funny. You know, you'd go in and then you'd come out and go, oh, oh, that donut looks really good, you know. <laughs> I think when you want to reward yourself as well, like, you know what, I've worked really hard and I, I deserve that donut. Right. I mean, that's the kind of thing that, you know, can sabotage you because typically what I would do, you know, I'd, I'd be good one day and say, oh, okay, well, well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reward myself now and eat this. And you're kind of like defeating the purpose. But what I discovered after, you know, getting on this fitness train, so to speak, is that, well, maybe I'm going to reward myself. I'm going to go get a manicure or a pedicure or something that doesn't involve food. So that, that way you kind of, you know, push off, the, you know, because who doesn't like manicures and pedicures, right? So <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about uh, when we were talking about Beach Body Ready and just – I don't have, I'm sure I don't have as many funny stories as you, but the the one beach area that I noticed that they really don't care is at a nudist beach. And when you oh. go to a nudist beach, they're just like, what do you mean? We're all, it doesn't matter at all. Like you would think that would be like Sports Illustrated Central, and it's totally right. contrary to that. Well, that's something that I don't think I will ever check out. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah, and you know what? When you go to the beach, it's like, and you look around, they're real people. You don't really see too many, you know, supermodels running across the beach, you know? And mm-hmm. I'm talking men and women. I mean, they're regular people. And you go, oh, okay, well, maybe I'm not so bad, you know? Exactly. So you were being super serious initially, and you had a cardiologist that was kind of, you know, tapping the ruler on your hand if you didn't follow his rules. When did you stop taking it so seriously? Well, what happened was, I mean, and this is a really funny story about my cardiologist, and I still go to him today, and I went back, went to him in 2010, um, because I had an episode of AFib, which is atrial fibrillation. It's it's a irregular heartbeat, and it's triggered by a lot of things, but in my case, it was triggered by high salt. I was eating too much high salt. So when I went to him, the first, and I was very overweight, the first thing he said to me, and he, he wasn't being mean, he was just being a doctor, and he said, well, you're heavy, but you're not the heaviest person I've ever seen. And I, I looked at him and I said, I'm thinking in my head, this guy just told me I'm fat. And I'm, <laughs> I can't believe it. Nobody's ever said that to me. But it's something that I really needed to hear because I was like, oh, oh, my gosh. Well, I thought I was fat, but nobody else ever told me, probably for fear of, you know, me beating the hell out of them. But, you know, <laughs> I, I needed to hear that in order to say, okay, wow, I really need to make some changes here. Now, does that bring in a new definition of don't shoot the messenger? <laughs> well, to this day, I call him Dr. K in the, in the book because I, I promised him I wouldn't use his real name um, or he would kill me. But um, <laughs> he says today, I never said that, Mary. I said, oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And the funny thing was right after I started going to him, I ran into him. I was going one of the many gyms that I joined. I ran into him at the gym, and I thought, oh, my God, this guy's following me to make sure I'm working out. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, what happened, though, is when I started, you know, I never really read food labels. And when I had this AFib condition, I started reading food labels and realizing that so much food has so much sodium in it. Mm-hmm. And... The average person eats way over the allotment of sodium. The American Heart Association uh, says they keep it between 1,500 and 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. And that's tough to do because so many of the foods, even like crackers and things like that, have sodium in them. So I started watching my sodium, and I downloaded this great free app on the phone. It's called My Fitness Pal. And that will track your sugars, your sodium, your carbs, your calories. It's great, and it's absolutely free. So I started putting things in and and going, oh, my gosh, well, I can't eat that. That's got 500 milligrams, and I can only have 1,500 for the day. And that, combined with working out, really started 
I really started to see significant weight loss. And I said, wow, wish somebody had told me this 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. So in a, in a weird way, it was kind of having a fib that helped me to lose the weight. Mm. So, Mary, for you, a lot of it had to do, I know this, people talk about sugar in the same way, how we just overconsume on sugar. But for you, it was really kind of watching and monitoring your, your sodium intake that when you started to get results? It really was. And, and the other thing is, I mean, what I tell people all the time is the most important thing that you can do when you're trying to lose weight is to move every day. You don't have to join a gym. You don't have to, you know, spend a lot of money. I've spent so much money over the years on gyms that I didn't like or I, I felt intimidated at. And a neighbor had told me about a local gym at um, a hospital, which is right down the street from me, that was open to the public. And I started going, and it was small, and the people were friendly. And I actually felt welcome there. And as a result, I would go every day after work. I still, you know, I work full time. And I combined the working out with the low sodium. And that was, I finally started to see, oh, my gosh, I'm down two pounds this week. Wow, I'm down two pounds, you know, the next week. And it was just like a a, a switch flipped on, combining the two things. And, you know, it was still a struggle because I, I was a junk food junkie. But now I had motivation because, well, I didn't want my heart to be bouncing off the ceiling. <laughs> and and I actually liked, not that I liked going to the gym, but I liked going there to socialize because I was meeting all these really nice people. And I said, well, I'm here. I might as well do the machines or I might as well get on the treadmill. And I'd take a break and go chit-chat with the receptionist. And then it was a totally different experience. And I think that that's, you know, you have to find what works for you. Some people may like a big gym. Some people may want something smaller. Some people may just want to go outside and walk. Or some people might like bike riding. Whatever you have to, you know, it takes you a while to find something that you like. I agree. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. It's Interesting, I was having this kind of a similar conversation. A coworker of mine is a, does personal training on the side, and uh, he was saying the exact same thing is, you know, try to move every day. You don't necessarily have to join a gym, but try to find some kind of activity, movement activity that you enjoy. You know, it can mm-hmm. be different for everyone. And um, I knew another woman who had was close to 300 pounds, and – I didn't know her at that time, but when I first met her, she was, I don't know, probably around maybe 130, and it was at like a it was at a cardio class, and she told me that she used to be 300 pounds. I was like, really? Yeah, it's wow. hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine you, you know, looking at. And so she showed me a picture. She kept the picture, and I was like, wow. I said, how did you get it all off? She's all, you know, to be honest, me and my husband, we changed our diets and stuff, but she said more than anything. We walked. We walked every day. She said, it all took like two years to get it all off, but she said, I would credit walking probably more than anything is what she said. And walking they really is the best. Yeah, it's the best exercise. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, I like to walk outside too. And, and when it's really hot, I just tell people, sometimes I go to the mall too. You know, I try to walk a little at lunchtime. We get an hour for lunch. So if if it's hot, I'll just – we happen to be across the street from a mall, so that works. But I always tell people, don't bring your credit card. Because every time <laughs> I go to walk in the mall with a credit card, I come out with bags. So. <laughs> <laughs> my story with walking, it makes me think of Oktoberfest, and I was visiting my sister in, in, uh, in Munich, and I thought I would gain weight just because of the – beer consumption but i actually lost weight because everyone there walks i mean you it doesn't matter the time of day it's like one or three o'clock in the morning and people are like 60 70 years old pushing you out of the way for walking too slowly right well you know the the gym that i go to um i'm 62 now and i'm one of the young ones <laughs> which, mm-hmm. which is nice because a lot of times you know if you're overweight you go and you join a gym and you know first of all everyone's 
a lot younger than you, and then everyone's, like, already fit. And I said in the book I felt like a before and a sea of afters. You know, <laughs> I was like, ooh, you know. And I'm sure, you know, nobody really cares or nobody's looking at you, but you kind of feel that way. You feel intimidated and you feel like, oh, you know, I don't I don't fit in here. Um, but, you know, maybe that was just me too. But, but uh, I, I kind of, like I said, I kind of, gravitated this gym that I've been I've joined that one since and I've been a member since 2015 so I really enjoy it um, they just opened a brand new beautiful gym down the street from me and it's a lot cheaper so I said all right let me just go check it out well I walked in and it was at 6 30 at night after I got done from work and I walked in and first of all it looked like there was like 500 people there and the average age looked to be about 19 so I turned right around and walked out again, you know. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting about uh, waves or, you know, time waves because it, as you were talking, it made me think of, you know, football season's right around the corner. And, you know, you're at the, at the local eatery and you have p- girls in there that are wearing high heels and such. And other girls are like, they're, they're not really football fans. They just came to, you know, check out the guys and it's the same thing that I found with the gyms is that like after after work it's more of a pickup or meat market as they say and if you go before work those are the diehard hardcore people that kind of get it out of the way and it it actually gives you that runner's high and it's a good way to start the day have you ever tried that I have tried for years to try to get myself together in the morning and I I've discovered that I'm just not a morning person it's you know enough for me to get out the door by eight o'clock to get to the office by nine so um yeah I I I tried that path and I just I can't I have to I have to like be working all day and then then at the end of the day I'm like okay I'm ready to and it's good to work out your frustrations (laughs) with people at the end of the day too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're like where did that extra mile come from darn it karen <laughs> karen yeah, yeah. pisses me off today <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i want to tell you uh you you mentioned my fitness pal and i wanted to know if you knew about iSaver. it's a free app uh, for desktops and what it does is it it makes your screen go dark about 40 to 60 minutes intervals and it tells you, you know, stretch your eyes, you know, rotate your eyes, get up, walk around, get some water. And I found that before using it, I was like, oh, I drink enough water or I get, I move around enough. And it was actually the app that helped me become more mobile. And as we're more sedentary, I think we need some of those apps as a reminder. Wow. No, I didn't. But that's a, that's a great, that's a great app. And um, I, I also use, um, which I would recommend for people, uh, the Fitbit because that will track your steps. It also tracks your heart rate. And it will give you, uh, I have the Fitbit Alta, and it will give you reminders. It will say time to, time to step. And, um, and I'll get up, you know, because I, I, you know, have a, a, you know, a desk job. I'm a director of communications. So I'm, I'm on the phone a lot, and I'm sitting down a lot at the, at the computer, but I do make it a point to get up and walk around the office and, you know, just to or get up and stretch. A lot of offices now have those desks that, that kind of um, stand up, but mm-hmm. we don't have them yet. But, um, but I, do, I do try to be very conscious of that because, you know, especially on a busy day, you're sitting there and it's all of a sudden it's lunchtime. And you say, oh, oh, my gosh, I haven't gotten up, you know. Mm-hmm. Are you one of those people where you're, you're, someone's talking to you and you're thinking, you know what, I really haven't made my goal of steps today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll try at lunchtime to do. I try to do, we, I try to do about a half an hour of walking at lunchtime. Some days I do, some days I don't, some days I'm just too busy. And then that way, at, when I go to the gym at night, then I've got, you know, half of my cardio done. So then I only have to do, if it's a cardio day, I'll do another 30 minutes. Um, or if it's a weight day, then I'll, I'll try to do weights like every other day. Um, mm-hmm. But I have to be honest with you, I was in Cape Cod all of last week, and it was so hot, I did not do a lot of walking. But I did. I was in, in the water swimming, so something like that Perfect. is good, too, as long as the movement is, is going. Absolutely. 
And it's controversial in the work environment, at least in business rags. And they're, they're talking about uh, companies giving incentives if you wear a Fitbit. And if you reach a certain goal or objective every day, like it gives you some benefits or bonuses on your insurance. Is, is your company looking at something like that? Uh, we don't. We, I believe our insurance plan will reimburse for like half of the gym costs. So, but the company itself doesn't. We're small, so um, so they don't really have those incentives. But there is a few of us who, you know, we we walk religiously every day at lunch, and we try to get others involved. And and some people just aren't into it, and they, I mean, which is fine. You know, we, I don't like to preach to anybody. I just like to tell people, you know, here's what worked for me. Um, and take it or leave it. So, <laughs> I'd like to so, go back for a second, Mary. Um, with well, it's going to be a little, a couple of questions. So I'll let David go first. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now I'm just going to ask real quick. So at this point in time, Mary, are you work? Do you work, go to the gym and work out every day, or how often are you going? I go. Uh, I try to go every day. If I don't go, you know, if it's a nice day after work, there's some beautiful parks that I like to to walk um, to walk at. But I try to go every day, and then the weekends I usually will just walk outside. Um, a dancing is also good, so I usually go dancing with my friends every Saturday night, um, and that's wonderful exercise, and it's it's great fun too. You don't even realize you're exercising. Yeah. Okay. How does that work when you're dancing? I know girls can dance in a circle, but it looks awkward if guys are dancing in a circle. Um, you know what? I'm finding nowadays, like, just anybody that wants to dance, they just get up and dance, and it's just kind of a free-for-all. Like, everybody is just joining in. Um, it's, uh, you know, more and more men, I see, are getting up to dance, which is great. Um, so I don't I don't really think it's it's – such a big deal as it, it, used, it used to be. Sure. I, I was just thinking about an old comedy bit where, you know, girls are frustrated because, you know, maybe a, they broke up with someone and the girls take them out and they're all dancing in a circle and the guy can't penetrate that circle. And they're like, no, we're just dancing for ourselves. We want to be free. And, and, and guys <laughs> just don't have that dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I and I, I think as you get older, it's it's not. You know, I've I've seen some guys just go. You know, some some old timers out there, and they just dance. And I'm like, hey, good for you. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I'd like to give a shout. Now I don't even know her name, but I think this lady saved my life. I was at the store, and I think I buy healthy stuff, you know, and I'm, and she's looking at my box or looking at my cart. And she was just like, if I were married to you, you wouldn't have half of this crap. And I was, she walked me around the store and I pretty much took everything back. And I was like, Whoa, I love, what's your name? You know? And so she was like, um, what you said about the sodium. And I, I wanted to ask you if it's always been that way, or it just seems like, even with the healthy food, more so now that there's a higher concentration of preservatives in the food? It seems to me like that there is more of it now because there's so many processed foods. I mean, and even like food chains that um, that have like health, supposedly healthy sandwiches, there's one in particular that our uh, office orders from. They order lunch a lot. And there was, you know, a veggie a veggie sandwich, grilled vegetables, and you would think that it would be healthy. So I looked it up on my fitness pal, and here it was over 1,000 milligrams of sodium. And I said, well, geez, that's a veggie sandwich. That's crazy. And ironically, sometimes, like, if you're, you know, if you're on the road and you have to eat fast food and there's no other selection, I found it really strange that one of the popular fast food restaurants the hamburger actually had less sodium than the chicken sandwich, which is very mm-hmm. odd. So, mm-hmm. so I opted for the hamburger. So, um, you know, I, I do eat a lot of fish, which is great because it's very low in sodium. And you can just grill that, and I go for anything easy. Um, in the back of the book, I put a lot of suggestions for meals, and I, I make it really, really easy because when I get home, 
from the gym at 7.30 at night, I don't want to cook. I don't have time to cook a gourmet meal, so I'll do, like, a grilled fish or chicken, boil in bag rice and microwave vegetables, and you have a meal, and it's low sodium. In speaking with your cardiologist, did he also mention that the sodium depletes the potassium, and have you found a way to increase your potassium intake? I usually go for, you know, if I, you like bananas, I, us, I usually have a banana, a small banana a day. Now, bananas are high in sugar, but mm-hmm. I think the, the, so the um, potassium, you know, outweighs that. And by the time I get done with all my steps and everything during the day, my sugar levels are okay. Um, I'm trying to think one of the other. I, I, I do eat um, a lot of, like, you know, bean salads. Um, and I always look at the labels. We have an organic section in our grocery store because some of the beans, believe it or not, the canned beans can have high sodium. So I go with the organic low sodium black beans and chickpeas and things like that that are filling but are not going to overload you with sodium. Mm-hmm. And, and what you're talking about is our, our regular diet consists of sugar, salt, sugar, salt. So once you cut that out of your diet, how long did it take to curb your cravings that used to happen before the sugar and salt? It took a long time. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> I, still, I still crave the sugars. The, the, biggest, the biggest challenge for me was with my, with my job, we do a lot of events after work. And every time we'd have an event, it was like junk food. It was like fried, fried mozzarella sticks, fried buffalo wings. Everything was fried, and it was really difficult because I used to just dive headfirst into that stuff, and now I had to stop and think, well, I can't really eat it because of the sodium, but I want it. So, you know, sometimes I would I would see if they could bring out a vegetable plate, or sometimes I would bring, like, just some nuts or, or like, um, one of those kind bars with me just so I could have something to eat. And, you know, because the worst thing is when you're starving and all this food is here to to eat it. But that was difficult. Um, As far as the sugar cravings, that's difficult. Holidays, um, you know, Christmas is is really, really tough for me because I love sweets. But what I've started to do is I I really love dark chocolate. And the dark chocolate is tends to be much lower in sugar and more satisfying. So I'll always make sure, like, I'll have some dark chocolate now. And I've gotten to the point where I don't even really like the milk chocolate anymore. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So what about the, the, the mindset of, well, you're, you know, you're watching what you eat and, and keeping your sodium low and your sugars and all that. But like let's say Thanksgiving and Christmas, so those are only, you know, come around once a year. So on those days, you know, I'm just gonna just relax it and just and, and just just eat the, you know, the food that's been made or prepared for this day, and not think too much about, you know, exactly what I'm eating just for that particular day. And then the next day, you just kind of get right back to, you know, your normal kind of eating. Well, that, yeah, that's what I do, you know, because life is too short. So, you know, what I tell people is, yeah, if there's if there's a big holiday party, you know, you know, don't don't overstuff, but but enjoy yourself. You know, what I tend to do is nibble on the on the vegetable plates, and then I'll eat, you know, what I want, and I'll have a dessert, or I'll have maybe, you know, half of this dessert and half of that, and and I don't worry about it. Maybe one day I don't I don't fill out all the, what I ate in my fitness pal because you have to enjoy things same thing if you're going to a wedding and you want to be able to enjoy um, I use the same strategy I'll just fill up on the vegetables and then I'll eat what I want and certainly going to have a piece of wedding cake you know <laughs> of course yeah. Yeah, of course and and well I'm thinking I want to ask you about the system because now that you've, I guess, broken the matrix here, you'll see that, like, uh, it, it's cyclical as far as the calendar. And so you have, like, the, the gym commercials or hypnotherapists come out at the beginning of the year because they know everyone was backsliding during the holidays. And then 
again in the middle of the year where it's like, are you ready for the weddings or did you drop the ball right. because of your New Year's resolutions? How are you able to break through that uh, subliminal message where you're saying, because you're saying there's a lot of association with depression, and I think it's not always just ourselves is what we're seeing or we're being bombarded by messages that we're not on task. Right. I mean, that's, you know, it. the weight loss industry is, a, you know, multi-million dollar industry. And the the truth of the matter is that, yes, some people will lose weight when they, they use these various diets, but a lot of them will gain it back because I've known people that have done, oh, I'm doing this particular thing or that, and they lose a little bit of weight. And then once they stop, they go, they gain it back. Because, you know, if you're relying on meals in a box or, or, or pills or liquids or something, that's not real. You know, you're not, when you start eating real foods again. So, you know, what I tell people is just try to, you know, try to, when you go to the grocery store, get a lot of, you know, a lot of produce. Spend most time in the produce aisle and kind of limit the, the processed foods that you buy, things in box, even stuff like macaroni can be very, you know, a lot of carbs, a lot of salt. Um, but you, you're right, it is it is difficult when you see all these commercials and you see this one and that one, oh, I lost this. And then you get frustrated when you're overweight going, well, you know, that didn't work for me. And then you think something's wrong with you. No, no. They're only showing you maybe like one-tenth of the people who really did lose weight. The rest, mm-hmm. you know, the other 90% are, are struggling just like you are. Mm-hmm. I want to ask, so Mary, I wanna ask do you. you, still, do you Mary, do you still see yourself like on a diet or do you, do you still, are you looking more that it's just more of a lifestyle change? It's It's definitely a lifestyle change. I mean, Uh, Like, for instance, I was just on vacation this week, so I did, you know, I did have, you know, some cookies or some some ice cream and things like that, but, um, yeah, I've, you know, it's a weird thing when you start eating healthy, your body will almost get used to it and your body will start craving the healthy things. It sounds bizarre, I know, especially coming from me who, like, love chicken wings, but, it's a weird thing, and you'll start to crave, and you're like, oh, no, I don't want that. And, and you go, why, why don't I want that? That's really weird. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a lifestyle change. And, I'm, you know, last week I didn't use my fitness pal because I was like, you know what, I'm on vacation. But I know, like I said, I eat a lot of fish, and I really didn't go off kelter that much. But you, you kind of get into, into this situation where this this is how you you know how you live every day and you know that you're you're working out and you're eating and um it's still a challenge it's a challenge every day but it's not so difficult for me now because it's that's that's what my life is about and a lot of people will you know that I work with you know say oh how do you do how do you keep it and I look at what they're eating and I said, like, again, I don't like to preach, but I said, well, you know what, maybe instead of having the sandwich every day, you, you have a salad because you're eating that bread every day and that's carbs. Or maybe you shouldn't eat those, you know, fried chicken breasts every day or something, mm-hmm. you know, like little things that you could do to kind of ease into a more healthier lifestyle. One thing that I did like, Mary, that you talked about, uh, we, we talk about God winks and, and uh, we talk about how coincidences or lack of coincidences or pro-coincidence and all these things in our life that drives us. And so sometimes that there's a, a whisper and you pay attention. Other times there's like a spiritual four-by-four where you don't pay attention and then you get that wake-up call. And you had mentioned in 2010 you had that irregular heartbeat and – most people won't pay attention until they get that spiritual four by four. Do you think that there's a way that you can pay attention to the whisper? Like, did you see even before the AFib happened that you were getting notification uh, subconsciously, spiritually, however you want to look at it to curb your, your lifestyle at that time? I, I don't know that I got any specific notification. I mean, I knew it. I knew that I, 
was not at the optimal health. Um, but I think that that was kind of a, a, a wake up call, although that happened in 2010 and it, it took me a long time to get it together. I would, I would, um, you know, I would go back. I would, like I said, I would lose 20 pounds and then gain it back. Um, I think because I didn't like the gyms that I was going to and I got frustrated and stopped going, but I would go back to the cardiologist and he would say, Mary, what happened? And I'd say, well, Christmas happened. And he would laugh <laughs> Hey, well, you know, we'll try to try to you know do this or that, and then um, you know I, I have to tell you, you know, the the book I dedicated to my best friend Mary Adams. She passed away in 2015, and we would always talk and we would always have these hysterical conversations. And she would say, you know, oh, she lived in Pennsylvania outside of Philadelphia, and she would say, oh, I'm so fat, I can't get over the, the uh, Walt Whitman Bridge. And I, in New York, I said, well, I'm so fat, they had to reinforce the George Washington Bridge. And <laughs> it would just go on and on with all this craziness. But it, it helped us to laugh, and it helped us to kind of, you know, give each other the encouragement to keep going. And I think, you know, that's what, uh, if you have, a, you know, a good friend that you can talk to about it, too, is is always helpful. That's a good, really good point, Mary. Uh, it, it made, I had an instance uh, the other day, and it made me think of uh, child rearing. Um, as a child, your your parents always told you to clean your plate, or there's people starving oh, and yeah. yeah. right around the world. And you're like, oh, I gotta eat. And so I was at dinner the other night, and we had gone to one of those places where the food portions are just <laughs> they're inhumane. <laughs> and you look around, it was actually the opposite of what you saw at the gym. Like everybody, like you said, was after. But everyone at this place, because they don't give you a fork, they give you a shovel, everyone there was like, whoa. And I was just, it was the first time, like, I was just so self-conscious because you're like, wow, these people are, are should be next to a hospital. Like, I've seen that in Texas. Like, they have hospitals next to steak places. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, we used to joke because I would always go to the uh, – they probably have them all over, but there are tons of them in New York, the all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. Mm-hmm. And I used to love the Chinese buffet, but I mean, I don't even want to think about the amount of sodium that I consumed there. But um, we, we, we would joke because all of the customers were, as I say, nutritionally challenged, and all of the staff there were very, very thin. Mm-hmm. And, and it was just – you know, yeah, now I look I look at people and I go, well, how come, you know, how come they can eat all this stuff and their heart's ticking away? And if I, you know, look at a piece of sesame chicken, my heart's going to be bouncing off the ceiling, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you're right. It's, it's, a, it's a weird kind of thing there. And, it, you know, it's difficult for people. It really is. I mean, I spent 19 years trying to get myself together. It's very, very difficult to change your habits and to get into a new lifestyle of eating because in the beginning it's it's like oh I don't want to eat that oh I want my I want my wings you know but when you look I think what did it for me is when I started using my fitness pal I guess I started using that around 20, 2015 and I actually saw what I was consuming and and going oh my god wow I didn't realize, you know, it's an eye-opener, and then you can make conscious choices and go, do I really want to put that much salt into my body? Whether you have AFib or not, too much salt is not good for your heart um, mm-hmm. and can cause a lot of problems down the road. And I think mm-hmm. actually seeing those numbers will really give you a jolt and say, wow, I, I didn't realize, you know. Yeah, I think that's life, all right? Like if you look at you don't look at your financial numbers, you're like, surprise. Surprise, <laughs> you have no money, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and I never used it, so it sounds like we're doing an ad. I mean, even though it's free for my fitness pal, but it it makes me think of a a friend of mine, her kid is uh has gluten issues. So the yeah. app, they have an app where it tells them where they can eat where they're it's gluten-free and does my fitness pal kind of do the same thing. They give you suggestions of restaurants where there's not that huge sugar salt intake. They don't. No, they don't give suggestions 
about, you know, what types of food. Um, but they do have a, a kind of a neat option, which is like a, a scanner. Like if you have a, a box with a barcode, you can actually scan that, and it will it will bring all the information from the box on there, like the, you know, the number of carbs, the calories, the servings. The, it even tells you, like, your vitamins and everything, which is great. Hmm. Let me ask you about your water intake because you're, right, you're supposed to have, like, eight glasses or such. And most people are, like you said, after work, or not after work, but after lunch. You know, you get that 2, 3 o'clock craving. Mm -hmm. And in many respects, a glass of water would curb that. Uh, Were you able to track your water intake as well? I do. I drink a lot of water. I probably drink about 12 glasses a day because when I'm at the gym, I go through a lot. And when it's hotter out, you have to to drink more. And also, you know, if you have AFib, like I do, I have occasional AFib. So I'll just have a flare up every, you know, few months or, uh, but you have to drink a lot of water because you can dehydrate very easily, especially when it's hot. So I keep one of those big, um, water bottles on my desk and I go through probably about two of them during the day and then another one at the gym. So I, you know, getting enough water is is absolutely, you know, essential when you're, for anyone, whether you're trying to lose weight or not, just to kind of flush your system out. And it's great for your skin. Um, A lot of people can't believe I'm 62. And they say, what's your secret? I said, I drink water, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Now, are you drinking water or are you drinking super flavored, oxygenated, (laughs) specialty water? No water. Okay. <laughs> because they're adding, you're adding. I mean, there's sugar in everything. Like you're, you're so cognizant of the sugar intake now. You were like, oh my goodness, you put sugar in my whatever, and it's sugar in everything. Right, and I even, t- you know, I have maybe um, one or two cups of tea a day, but I take it without the sugar, which I've been doing for years because I just I feel like the sugar in the milk kind of takes away from the flavor of the tea. So, you know, and, and iced tea too, you know, I, I tend to like, if I'm going to have iced tea, I'll make my own because it's so easy to make and just put some lemon in it. Now, it's funny you say that because you're above the Mason-Dixie line and below it, it's all sugar in the tea. So <laughs> right, you don't right. even expect to get tea without sugar in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Mary, at this point, are 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 you have you reached your goal, or are you still trying to um, to to drop more weight? I I have reached my goal. I'm I'm my my objective now is to just keep toning, because especially as you get older, you know, arms will sag into bat wings, and, um, <laughs> and I I do not have a washboard stomach, which I do not know whether I ever will, but I do, you know, I'm trying to concentrate on toning abs and toning um, arms. Okay. Do you drink green tea? I do. I do. Green tea, green tea is very good. Um, I probably drink more of it in the winter. In the summer, I tend to, you know, have maybe only one hot drink a day in the morning to kind of get me started. Yeah, I was just thinking of, uh, like you said, there's a lot of fad diets. And a couple of years ago, there was, I think it was a green tea extract supplement. Mm -hmm. And many people were like, well, why don't you just drink green tea? I mean, it does help you lose weight. Uh, but most people feel well. If it's a, in a pill form, then it's more effective. You know, I and and I had asked my my cardiologist about these things, and and he he would always say, Mary, don't waste your money on anything. Mm. I would say, Oh, I just heard about this. He said, Don't waste your money, and and he's right. You know, like I said, some things may work for some people, but for the majority, it's just down to. It comes down to diet and exercise. You know, there's anything that you need is in the grocery store. And, you know, you, you like I said, you don't have to join a gym. Just to put your sneakers on and go out for a walk, you know. Um, I think a lot of people, too, may be rushing into these, these surgeries that they do for mm-hmm. weight loss. Now, granted, some people mean if they're grossly you know overweight or or morbidly obese may need it but 
you know, a lot of people, I think, are jumping too fast into that because they don't want to do the work. And it is hard work. I'm not going to lie. It's very hard work, especially if you, if you haven't done that type of, type of thing before. But you start out with baby steps. You start out maybe walking, you know, 15 minutes a day. And then you increase that to 20. And, you know, little by little, it is going to take some time. It is going to be work. But it's going to be a lot less you know, of of a uh, hassle than than going through a surgery. I think. Yes, yes, yeah. And you said it was hard and it's, and it's difficult. And I remember as a child that I learned early on that women mature a lot faster than guys. They're smarter than guys. All that good stuff. <laughs> so, what would you say for your like spouses? Because in many cases, it's the wo- women live longer. I mean, that's a mathematical statistic there, right? They're taking care of themselves. So what do you do when you're both used to that, like you said, that high sodium salt diet, and then you want to make that change? How do you help your spouse to get on the same page? Don't make anything that he doesn't like. I mean, don't make don't make anything you don't like. <laughs> no, I, you know, I think you just lead by example, and and if your spouse sees you eating you know, more salads and grilling foods and having maybe fruit for dessert, they, you know, they may say, oh, okay, well, maybe I should try it. You know, it's it's hard because you can't force someone to do something. I have a very good friend who um, is morbidly obese, and I, I don't want to preach to her, but I, I said to her, well, you know, she bought my book, and and I said, well, this is what worked for me. And, you know, she's to the point now where she can't even walk because she has so many, like, issues with her feet and everything. And she has diabetes. And, you know, and I'm worried. I'm worried about her. And I, I try to say, okay, well, you know, you know, we went out to lunch recently. And I had a salad. And she ended up having, like, chicken wings. And it's, I, you know... I, it's hard. It's hard because you can't force people to do something that they don't want to do. You can suggest, you can show by example, but it's it's like anything else. They have to make the decision that they want to get healthy and they want to do it. Yeah. And I'm thinking of cop-outs where, you know, uh, a husband may say to the wife, why are you losing weight? Like you met somebody else? You know, <laughs> it probably has nothing to do right. with that, but they're like, if you if you lose weight, that means you're cheating on me. Right. <laughs> and and there's an you made me think of a story. Um, one of I had worked in at an ad agency prior to this, and one of my clients was um, a local hospital, and they were that was when they were first starting out the bi- bariatric surgery. That's the weight loss surgery, which is a very mm-hmm. invasive surgery, and the doctor had told me that a woman woman came in and said to the doctor, my husband wants me to lose weight. And he said, I, I looked at her and said, it would be easier for you to find a new husband than to go through this surgery. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, it, you know, like she was doing this because he wanted her to lose weight. And, you know, that's a, that's a heck of a way to, to lose it, you know. I mean, I think if you've tried everything else, um, it used to be you had to try everything else, and if all else failed, then that was that was what you did. But it's very difficult, from what I hear, afterwards. I mean, you you are really strictly bound because you know your your whole insides have have changed. Yeah, and I, I think what what you're saying is easier to free to get another spouse. Have you found that uh, with your social circle or f- uh, family as well? They're like, well, you, we've, uh, we've eaten this for generations, and now you don't. You think you're better than us, and do you find yourself uh, uh, spending your time with other people that are, that are healthier? No, honestly, no. The, everybody was very happy for me, and, you know, some, some of my friends have taken um, my suggestions. Um, but, no, it, it really hasn't made um, – it really hasn't changed anything for me, which is which is good, you know. Um, like I said, everybody uh, to each his own. I, I tell people what what I think. Some people still use those 
you know, those uh, crazy liquid diets. And I said, well, uh, okay. You know, I tried that. It didn't work for me, but, you know, go ahead if you want to try it. And, you know, you can't, like I said, you can't, you can't be too pushy about what. If somebody asks me, um, you know, all of my friends have read the book, um, so they know what, what has worked for me. And I'll say, oh, come on, you know, let's go for a walk or do something. Or, you know, like I said, sometimes at work we try to get everybody involved in in walking. Um, some people do and some people don't. So I don't, I don't push. Mm-hmm. I'm also thinking of, uh, of Jack Canfield, and he had the chicken soup for the soul, and right. then – he kind of changes it around for like golfers, you know, and uh, or parents, or, you know. He just hit all these different niches, and mm-hmm. with I'm lazy and I love to eat, it it covers so many ranges. But I think you could probably break it apart into different niches. Have you thought about that also? Um, I I have. Um, I I always joke that people say, well, when's your next book coming out? And I say, well, in, in another 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and I, it, it's so funny because I I promised myself, you know, when I was taking all these notes and doing things that I wouldn't publish it until I had lost the weight. So that's that's why it took so long. Um, but I, I don't know. I've, I'm I'm kind of thinking about about a second book, but I I don't know. Right now, I'm I'm still you know talking about this one and trying to to help people. I mean, my goal would be to just help somebody to to you know, get like I said, they don't have to be skinny, but just get healthy and get to a healthy weight um and and feel better about themselves and and help people to, you know, to to live longer. Mhm. And you're you're at they say, you know, life's a destination, so or journey, not a destination. And so I'd like for you to speak a little bit about where you were maybe halfway and you, you're like, you know what, this is a crock. It's been 15 years and mm-hmm. nothing's working. I'm just going to just, you know, throw caution to the wind and just live my life out. What did you do to, to put, per, persevere? Well, you know, I, I just wanted – the main thing that I wanted to do was – become heart healthy. Um, I'm, I'm still on blood pressure medication, but a very low dose. I was on cholesterol meds and I saw myself going down this road where I'm like, I don't want to be, you know, in, in old age taking like 5 million pills. So I was able to get off my cholesterol meds and I just, you know, I tell people you will never fail if you don't give up. And in the back of my mind, I knew I was never going to give up, even when days when I was so frustrated. And, you know, there was, throughout the years, there was a lot of crying. And there was a lot of, you know, pity parties, poor me. And then you just have to look around and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, let's, let's stop this. Let's have a few laughs about some things that you did and, and just get back up on that horse. And that's what, what, kept me going because in the back of my mind I knew I am I'm never going to give up because I am going to get there I'm going to do this and nobody's going to stop me and no matter how long it took you know and that's what what you always have to keep thinking yeah I'm having a really bad day uh, I'm, I'm thinking about just forgetting it but I want to I wanted to be healthy I don't want to like I said go into old age taking all these pills and, and just the title, I mean, it's such a draw, and, and it hits a wide audience. I'm lazy, and I love to eat. It's like I, I wanted to know if you thought about creating, like, a YouTube channel, A Day in the Life of Mary, you know, what it, while you're walking, or this is me taking the stairs, or this is me checking in on my Fitbit or using my fitness pal, and it may be another way where people can access you if you haven't done that already. Well, I do. I do have a website. It's just lazylovetoeat.com, and I have a Facebook page, just Lazy Love to Eat. And I usually once a week will post a video. It's either about you know a workout tip, or um, sometimes I do like a, a little cooking tip. Like um, I'll show how to make a, like a really simple, easy meal because it's all about you know easy, being easy, being you know not having to worry about like 
you know, five million ingredients and something. So I do have, I do post them on uh, Facebook. Nice, nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you uh, to list your stuff and do it one more time because uh, do you do like live live video, like uh, check in with you on Facebook Live, and this is me at using my Fitness Pal, and I almost bought this sodium rich food, and I put it back. <laughs> Don't follow my mistakes. <laughs> yeah, it's um, the website is lazylovetoeat dot com, and you can also um, order the book. The book is on Amazon, and then the the Facebook page is just Lazy Love to Eat, and. Um, yeah, I do. Like sometimes, if I'm outside, I'll do I'll do a video, and um, if I'm at the gym, I'll do, I'll do a video. I'll show people how to use like a piece of equipment or something. Um, and sometimes it's just you know me being funny or silly, <laughs> which is always good. <laughs> sure, I, 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 that was my biggest takeaway because I'm kind of silly anyway. That's why I was really looking forward to to talking to you. It, that was my biggest takeaway, and I think you you definitely are. are what do they say? Uh, walk in the talk and not taking yourself so seriously. And, and once you stop taking yourself seriously, that's when you are where you are today. Right. I mean, that's what I always tell people. You have to laugh at yourself, even you know, even if you're you're down in the dumps one day. You just have to, you know, you have to laugh. I mean, the, one of the funny stories in the book is about when, when I went one time years ago to an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and came out, and I think my pants split, like literally. I mean, I mean, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's very. It wasn't funny at the time, but I'm looking back, I'm like, hey, that's pretty funny, you know. <laughs> yeah. We want to see that Facebook Live video, the, the pants splitting. <laughs> It's a ch- Facebook uh, uh, plant splitting uh, challenge. <laughs> Have everyone do it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, you have just been in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza. And I am David. And Mary, it was a pleasure. Please keep living on the lightheartedness. We, we love talking with you and love, free, love to stay in touch with you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks again for checking out another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast. Please check us out on our website at intrinsicmotivation.life where you can click on the speak pipe button and leave any suggestions for a future podcast that you'd like us to cover. Also, check us out on our social media sites. We have a YouTube channel, Facebook page, iTunes podcast, in addition to Stitcher and Google Play, all under Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. Check you out next time. Have a great day.